you know, if your business is failing, you shouldn't be looking at ways to improve the food solutions for employees. When you are going through a restart or a turnaround and you find that you're losing money, that there are specific areas that you can control. What are the things you can control? Well, you can look at your expenses, right? There's a whole list of people that maybe don't need to be working for you right now. You have money that you owe a lot of vendors and that is in your cash flow, but you may not have already sent that money off to your vendors. Guess what? You could call your vendors and say, I can't pay you right now. I'm gonna pay off your old bills as my financial situation turns around, I, but I will pay you your current bill moving forward, you know, and you could then find new ways to use that cash in order to sustain you in your business. I'm not advocating not paying your bills, but I'm saying use that money wisely. When you just start out in business, if you jump in your swimming pool and you're on the bottom of the pool and you're under oxygen, it's okay just to go up to the top of the pool, right? And get oxygen, Whew, you know? Right. If you're at 50 feet, and you're diving and you out of oxygen because your business is doing five million a year. Well, there's a good chance that you can, even if you swim to the top, you're not gonna die. You know, you might get the bends a little bit. You might get a little bit of ocean sickness from coming up too fast, but you're gonna live. But once your business is doing over $10 million a year, you know, you think about that. You need $200,000 over 10 million just to break even every week. That's a lot of money. And if you are all of a sudden losing money, you can go underwater and out of oxygen really quickly. And so if you're at 100 feet and you try to break to the surface, you're gonna die. So you need to find different techniques and tools in order to keep your business afloat. It was funny because we were creating a lot of different spreadsheets and we were measuring a lot of things that were, they were nice to know. It was nice to know how much we were paying in commissions as a percentage against calls and how the routing scheme was working and those types of things. But what really mattered is our key KPI was that our payroll had to be under 40% of revenue. And we were running at 70%. And I'm like, you know what? This is all great, but how is this gonna affect bringing our revenues down? And so during one of our turnarounds, I looked at a lot of different factors. One of the big ones was how many calls was each agent taking? And they were taking an average of like 30 to 50 calls a week. And I'm like, okay. We had our agents broken down into kitchen wares, fitness, beauty products. And we had best agents in each category. And I said, well, instead of focusing on, you know, focusing on some of these nice things, like how much commission they're making, things like that, we're at 70% payroll. Let's get that number to 40%. How do we do it? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, so a lot of companies don't plan for their success. And, and uh, in one case, you know, we had done 13 million in the next year, we were gonna do 22 million. You know, we were gonna spend 10% on marketing. And so 10% of marketing is at 13 million is 1.3 million. At 22 million, you have 2.2 million for marketing. Well, in our budget, because as a company, we were planning for, we were planning to be successful. We said, well, we have 2.2 million for marketing, but we right. didn't, we hadn't made 22 yet. Right. And it wasn't, you know, we weren't trending to make 22 either. So halfway through the year, we were wondering why we were so over budget in so many areas. We hired extra consultants. Went to more shows. Went to more shows. I mean, we had all these extra things we were doing. That's when I say you're not, you know, you're not necessarily planning correctly for your success. And so what I say, hire for culture first, yeah. I don't mean don't look at their pedigree, but I mean, make sure they fit into the box that you guys are in. If we bring somebody overly professional into our company, it might not be the best fit, you know? So we try to ask crazy questions. We try to talk about things that are part of our culture. And once we find their culture fit, now I wanna look at the resume and make sure they're qualified to do the job.